it. Oh, you know what? I have it going twice. I have it. I have it up. So it was oh. in my video. Woo! So, Good morning. Woo. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ah! <laughs> morning. It's Saturday live cast. We're we're gonna change things up a little bit this morning and let Madame Betsy go first over here. Yes. So that she can go and do some conducting this morning. Yes. Ah. Yeah. 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 Just imagine Mickey Mouse in the middle of uh, Fantasia. Uh, or <laughs> Harry Potter, which is what they're actually going to be playing. Oh, uh, nice. So big Harry Potter med medley. All right. Nice. Go for it, Betty. Be Betty? Who's Betty? Betty. <laughs> Betty. 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 <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, so let me go. My tip of the week is... Um, how to upload a photo to G2G. Because you know that we here at the Saturday Roundup Livecast love the photos. Um, so there are two places where you can put them. One is the free space page. So February, the theme is homes. Um, and this is this is uh, let's see, I am not on the free space page. I'm gonna go to the free space page. Um, okay. Am I successfully there? You are. Yes. Great. Um, so you can post them here and that's wonderful. And we always go through this. Um, however, there's, there's no way to let us know the story behind the photos. And sometimes that's, that's really, um, the magic of the photo is, is being able to share that. So the place to do that is to also, post your photo in the G2G thread. So I'm going to go to one of my, oh, I just stopped sharing. Sorry. Present, share screen. <laughs> okay, um, this is one of my ancestors and I've, I have a photo up here of him, of his, of his house, his home. So when I go here, um, you can see that I've already um, put it to the, the Holmes Free Space page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Who, where is this? Where is this picture? Yeah. This is on it, on the profile of Daniel Redwood. Where? Chipping, Gloucester. Chipping Sodbury, Gloucestershire. Oh, right? oh yes. Chipping Sodbury, small, small market town in South Gloucestershire. She is going to mention that GSL. We, we yeah, she knows about the comment on the image page, but on that space page, it doesn't really show up very easily when you're going through it. So there you go. Okay. Um, yes. So what I'm going to do, you just go to where the the photo. Um, in order to post to G2G, it already needs to be somewhere else on WikiTree. Okay. Um, so a profile or the free space page, either would work. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy the image address. So I believe if you're a PC user, you would do this, um, with a right click. Uh, is that right, Mags, to copy the image address? Um, what I usually do is, is scroll down and actually yeah. grab the URL from the wiki tree information down on the right. Down on the right. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Keep this? Going. Yeah. Okay. Or you can grab it from the URL at the very top. Oh, okay. All right. So now that I have that in my clipboard, I'm going to go back to the G2G post. I'm going to answer the post. Um, step number one, click on the little photo icon and then you're going to paste the URL in there. Um, my favorite part of this whole process is the, the Latin that comes up. <laughs> I took four years of Latin in high school. <laughs> Ooh. So, um, now go next, you go to the wit. Now you're going to start to see your picture, but it's way, way, way too big. 500 is probably going to be more than you want. Um, I start with three, 300 actually looks pretty good. You only, I only ever play with width. The height kind of just adjusts itself. Um, if you want, well, if you want to get really fancy 
and adjust the photo left or right within within the post, your answer. You can do that down here. Um, I'm just going to leave that be. And there's my photo. Um, then I'm going to be right back. I'm going to another tab and I'm going to grab, I pre-wrote my text that I'm going to add with this. And then there's my text. Um, see if I can neaten this up a little Questions? bit. I have yes. a question. What yeah. if you need to, to source a photo? What if this isn't one of your pro own personal photos? Ah, okay. Well, that's a great question. Remember that we're on Wikitree. We are very, very respectful of copyright um, privileges. So um, you shouldn't be using a photo that's, of course, that's copyrighted or that is if it's not yours, you need to have permission from somebody. What about so, Google Earth or something like that? Hmm. That's a good question about, I don't know about Google Earth. I know that you can go to uh, Creative Commons mm -hmm. um, where things are, are um, explicitly have been given permission to be used and um, on other sites. Um, and that's where I stick to that or personal photos or photos where I have written permission from the owner of the photo. And then I put that on the image description. Nice. Okay, yeah. good. Like, like if it's something from Ancestry, I will um, communicate with the Ancestry user and then I will put on our Wikitree page used with permission of Ancestry user Smith 10. Great so, job. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just did a quick Google search on yeah. Google Earth images. And as long as you um, attribute it properly, you can use it. You can use Google ah. Earth images. Great. So. It's good to know. Thanks, So Sarah. It's, a, it's like a free product and no additional permissions. You just need to make sure, you know. Nice. You, you got like mm -hmm. say you got it from Google. See what kind of things we learn in our Saturday lives. <laughs> That's great. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so this is how it's going to look. I'm going to add the answer and then ta da! Woo Woo nice. Yes. That was good. Yeah, thanks. All right. Uh, just, well, I'm reading the comments. Yes, hey, Kiki. <laughs> she doesn't look very happy about you waving her arm, though. She's, she's like looking. She's very happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So that's the that is the uh, the tip of the week. Tip of the week from uh, Betsy Co, who will be doing another Zoom meeting this or you're going to be doing something else this week, right? Uh, no, that was last weekend, the first weekend of every month. The first weekend of every month, she's going to be talking about new new user tips, mm -hmm. so you can check that out. And Betsy's going to be taking off, so she can go and pretend that she's conducting an orchestra. Nice. Not <laughs> pretending she's really going to be conducting really be doing it. here shortly. So doing her own magic. Yeah, doing her own magic. Oh, look at Kiki's in a. Well, was Kiki? Yeah, that was. He's that conducting. Was. He's conducting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, now oh, that's really good. Looks displeased. <laughs> we know well, we, we keep I'm you going around. To Go ahead. Say my goodbyes, and I will watch you later. All right. Bye. 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 Yeah, Betsy. Bye, Betsy. Oh. I'm going to jump straight into the question of the week for everybody. Okay. Um, and also, also real quick, I, I put a post up of the hashtag for uh, the, um, the the video series that I'm doing. What are you getting ready for? Do What are you getting ready? What are you doing to get ready for Roots Tech? Woo. Woo. Um, and if you follow this uh, tag on Facebook, you will be able to see all of those videos. And we did a video here just, just a few minutes ago, right before we started. So you can see that one too. So um, I'm going to post that up for just a second so you can catch up on those videos. Uh, you know me, they're not, they're serious, but they're not, you know? Uh, so the question of the week, we have a great question of the week this week. Let me get my... Can I, can I interrupt you real quick, Megs? Please do. So... Um... What, what, I don't know if this person's name, GSL, I don't know if there's a name attached to this person, but he said that they don't necessarily need to be on Wikitree to post it on G2G as long as you have a image URL link to it. 
Thank you so, very much. So, mm. thank you. Question of the week. So the question of the week is, what favorite family discovery have you made in your research? You people wrote some novels. <laughs> I have been reading three novels. I, I, it was like going on vacation and sitting at the cottage and looking at the water and reading these novels. What a great, great bunch of answers. What is your favorite discovery you made in your research? Uh, and I have a favorite, favorite answer, but I'm not going to show it yet. Um, <laughs> I loved this one. Uh, I worked with a fifth cousin to prove our common ancestors who they were. The key was a South Carolina will that acknowledged the fatherhood of several mixed race children and granted them the proceeds of his estate to gain their freedom via the recolonization project for the 1840s. Oh. I have no idea what that was. Oh. So, of course, I Googled it. And on Wikipedia, because Wikipedia is always right. Uh, there's a really interesting article that says the American Colonization Society uh, was a an organization founded in 1816 to encourage and support the migration of free-born Blacks and emancipated slaves to the continent of Africa. Oh. Uh, and so it's interesting to watch, uh, to read through this. Um, she talks about the kids going to boarding schools. Uh, in New Hampshire and showing up in uh, census reports. So I'm assuming they didn't get back to Africa. Uh, but I was watching a show last night with uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Rihanna of the uh, Carolina Chocolate Drops. Uh, and they were talking about the recolonization effort. So obviously there's a thread running through mm -hmm. some of the stuff that I was watching. This it, that, that It's called Enslaved. The name of the show that Samuel L. Jackson is doing. It's a really good show. Uh, it has lots of fun archaeology and genealogy. So if you want to watch that. Um, Aaron Bain says there are family rumors that a great grandfather had another family in South Africa or in India. And she discovered that, yes, indeed, he had another family in South Africa. It was his brother's family. Just not, you know, he didn't have another wife. So. Mm -hmm. This one, I'm going to wait and show you the picture. Hold on a second. This is from Alexis Nelson, who yeah. always gives us great uh, content for our Saturday morning. We should have her on so she can, like, talk about her own content. I'm having such fun watching Kiki <laughs> as your boa behind your head. Her tail was up right behind you. You look like you had a headdress of some kind on. Oh, okay. Uh, before doing serious genealogy in 2017, I never made the effort to find anything out about my father in World War II. And if you have veterans in your family, I have veterans in my family, and one of them talked about it a lot, my grandfather. My other veteran in my family never talks about the wars that he was in. So finding letters and war records were kept in a box no bigger than a box. Uh, might keep a pair of boots in, uh, and, and she seldom opened it. My mother had mentioned that my father's best friend was a tail gunner on a B-29, and they were both killed when the plane was shot down. In doing research, I found the tail gunner, Charles Markowitz. Therefore, with more research, I was able to find his younger brother, Joel. And this bond that I made with Joel has been very special, and a writer is a doing a book about our meeting. How fun is that, Alexis? Okay, so all the story, it's a wonderful story. We're, we know these people were flyers. So here's a picture of Alexis and Joel. Does anybody notice anything? Maybe it's not big enough for you to see. Uh, but let me see if I can zoom. There's something above them. Yes. There's a plane above them. It's or... a plane. And I don't know, even know that Alexis realizes that there's yeah. a plane right here. You can't tell what kind of plane it is, but in my mind's eye, it's a B-52 bomber. That's right. Isn't that funny? I bet Alexis hadn't even noticed that. And it's perfect. It's That's like very cool. It's placed right between their heads. Yeah. Right there. It's right there. Right there. You yeah. See it? All right. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Will that make the picture bigger? Um, there we go. So if you right, if you right click it, Mags, yeah. right click it, right click the image. Yeah. Open image and new tab. That first one. That first. Yeah. And then. And then it's even bigger. Yeah. Then, oh. Whoop. And it was there. You already opened it. I did? Yeah. Oh, there, there it is. is. Yeah. 
Oh, and I can make it even bigger. But yeah, see, there's so isn't that cool? Very cool. That is very cool. So now I have to go back. It can also I, it can also be Superman. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think it's a plane. I think it's. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that there's kismet going on here. With well, if this was if this was a, a Christmas special, that would be the B fifty two coming back in time uh, with their pair, their fathers on it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, that isn't that a cool picture of Alexa? That's very that, cool. There's always something fun. Uh, go and and lots of people love the picture, and I don't even know if anybody noticed the plane and, and commented on it. I didn't read all of the comments. Like I said, I spent like two days reading all of the posts. It's been fabulous. Um, let's see. Let me buzz on down here. Uh, oh, I like this one too. After 40 plus years of research, I've had uh, many wonderful discoveries. My favorite, says Greg Lamberson, however, is finding out that my ancestor, David B. Lee, was not only an attorney, but also an inventor and air balloon pilot. 1792 to 1836, very early. So he corresponded with Thomas Jefferson about traveling through the atmosphere and even petitioning Congress for the right to the airspace above the U.S. How fun is that? And so he's got a WordPress blog uh, about that. You can check that out and go over and check out that. Uh, and look at the air airship. Like it was, it was, it looks like from a Monty Python movie. The way that this thing is so check that out that's fun i always love uh sharing other people's stuff star climb was really excited about it as was marion Rudy. um finding out elizabeth laffert received her rightful place in this family tree on wiki tree upon my discovery of her name on a marriage record of her daughter so finding out somebody's name was a big one another thing um let's see Oh, that's right. Died from eating mushrooms. Sorry. The, the oh, finding out K Smith. And this is not Kitty Smith. I was I was doing some research on that. We were thinking this might be oh. Kitty Smith. But I don't think it is. Um, mm. Somebody died from eating mushrooms. That was an interesting one. Um, mm. Amazingly, there were a couple of people who said that they had discovered that their family was in the circus. Huh. Uh, let's see. Oh, and here's another one. Lady Godiva. Ooh, yeah, like, like chocolate 30, Godiva. Yeah, like next <laughs> look, look at Kiki now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, she, she, this carrot. She's she's got a shawl on. Now. Yeah, that's what right. Is, it's a boa. She's, she's my parrot. Yeah. Uh, Lady Godiva. That's Jamie Johnson. Found out that she's her thirtieth great grandparent. Wow. Um, and if Betsy was still here. Yes. That my grandchildren related to Antonio Luis of Rico, the first female conductor of the New York Philharmonic. Oh. But that's gone. So, oh, man. Yeah, that's from Peter Vanderberg. Very good. Uh, abolitionists. Um, circus folks. Oh, here we go. Circus folks. I discovered one of my great grand aunts, Mamie Howie, married a man named Miles Orton whose family started the Orton Brothers Circus in Portage, Mich Wisconsin, in the 1800s. How cool. And it, it actually said circus performer. <laughs> As an occupation. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's wild. So he, we he had, could, and that was, could join the circus. That's from John Vasky. He's one of our regular Saturday people, too. Mm -hmm. um, I like this one now. I, uh, Sam Desjardins, you have one of my family names, so Desjardins. Mm -hmm. um, I like exploring admixtures and ancient DNA because people were talking about making discoveries because they had done DNA testing. Mm -hmm. On one side, I was surprised uh, that it said I was related to the Arpad dynasty. This mm -hmm. led me back to Wikitree, and I was surprised to see that not only am I 33rd great-granddaughter of Arpad of Hungary, but also the 47th great-granddaughter of Attila the Hun. <laughs> so... Attila the Hun was one of the great progenitors of, you know, right. so there you go. It, it found out my great grand uncle sang at the coronation of the king. That's pretty cool. That's very so, cool. Circus performers uh, found out uh, stories about wars. Uh, this is the best question, the answer of the week. This is it. Wiki Tree is one of my favorite. This is this is from Stephen and Harris. My favorite discovery was Wikitree. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I was doing research for years, but it never really clicked for me. And I never really understood the importance of documenting sources or providing anything other than relations until I stumbled upon Wikitree. Because Wikitree is such a great collaborative site, Stephen Harris was able to bump up his game. There you go. I'm going to jump on over to the next uh, one that I had picked out. Uh, the Discovering a Family Bible. And this one, this particular one belonged to, uh, to Marty Frank. Uh, and uh, while going through the family home of my grandfather, I came upon the family Bible that my great uncle brought when he immigrated from Sweden. It's about nine inches thick. Wow. That's pretty big. That's pretty big. Contains gorgeous calligraphy and artwork throughout. And it also has pictures of his parents inside. That's, I mean, that's like a discovery on top of a discovery, mm -hmm. like Kiki's on top of Sharon's <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Um, Let's see. What was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is another fun one. Uh, years ago, a distant cousin, a mutual friend, and I went on a genealogical research trip day, day trip for the day uh, at a local history society. On the way home, we were discussing what we had found. And when I mentioned finding the marriage record for my fourth great grandparents, which gave me the name of my fourth great grandfather's father, the mutual friend asked if he was one, if he was the one who was the Pennsylvania fracture artist. What is a fracture artist? I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you her grandfather's drawing. This is uh, from the Winterthur Museum, and this is Johann. Uh, uh, Johan, okay, now Johan Conrad Gilbert. Mm -hmm. How fun is that? And that his wow. art is like everywhere. How cool is that? That's pretty darn cool. So that was a really cool discovery that somebody made. So th that was my second choice. And then the, the, all the circus performers were third. <laughs> there were lots of DNA discoveries people were talking about. Um, uh, so yeah, there's lots of great stuff. Go and check out the question of the week. And you will find out lots of great information. I'm going to go ahead and hand this off. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll take it on. Uh, I'll take the baton, and we'll talk about um, the challenge of the week and the profiles of the week. So the profiles of the week are actually a mixed bag this week. They chose uh, three people who were born on February 8th, which was the day that the Wednesday newsletter came out. Um, and then the rest are seven profiles from the seven times seven by seven challenge, um, the third third wiki tree challenge of the year, and the uh, OPS stands for one place studies. And so these seven people were the key seven people from seven one place studies um, that were done. So I'm going to go through. Uh, let's see if I can do this right here. Uh, I'm going to go through the um, through them starting with the birthdays. But before I do that. Let me show you, like I have on previous weeks, the map. Oh, so, map. The, <laughs> woo and I'm using Wikitree Plus to do the maps now that that's working for me. Um, and I was going to, I said last week I was going to show you how I how I did it, um, but I didn't really come back and do that. So here's the here's the trick is you go into Wikitree Plus, which, and it opens by default with the suggestion tabs open, but um, I don't, I want to close that up and go into search. And then in the text search, I put, I put all of the uh, profile IDs of the people who I want to make a map of. So I just go from my um, from here, this list, and I find the Wikitree ID of each of the each of the people. And you can copy that from their profile page because there's a little button. You just have to click on ID to copy it. Um, and then in front of that, you use the keyword Wikitree ID equals, um, and then that will find those people. Hit the Get Profiles. It lists them here. And then when you click on the profile map, the this link here, it will automatically do a search. It tells you, okay, it, it uh, found 11 people. And if you hover over the, those people, you see the, the um, locations <clears throat> get highlighted on the map. So you see, I'm, I'm hovering over George Wallace, so you will see. Who is your closest? He was my closest? Yes. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> I wonder if that's why he's first on the list. I don't know. 17 degrees. <clears throat> that's pretty close. I don't know if he's a cut. He also looks like he went to Canada anyway, so that makes he sense. He did go to, go to Canada, yeah, because he died in Ontario. He died um, in Reach. And if you if you have children right now, you know that reaching is when you 
go over to a friend's house or you call a friend that's called that's reaching so <laughs> yeah so that makes sense now interesting the place he died is no longer uh there is no longer an ontario county in the province of ontario it got split into two uh simple counties one of them and um but he's actually that's actually fairly close to my house or my area but um if i move to here you get james dean his birth and death location um and there's lana turner who we'll be talking about um but uh and then there's another quebecois uh but what i'm hovering over john and i don't see that arrow because he's over in england so i'm gonna have to hey. zoom out a bit and go across so all of the profiles this week are basically north america and the united kingdom um if i zoom out again i'm pretty sure there's no other profiles in the rest of the world but whereas the last couple of weeks we focused on just one little country one well one country some canada wasn't that little um but uh this week they're a little more spread out so that's kind of neat um so going through the birthdays um the first birthday a person who was born on february 8th is james dean james byron dean born in 1931 uh, Marion Grant County, Indiana, and uh, as many people know, passed away on uh, the 30th of September, 1955, at only at age 24 hmm. uh, in California. You're 20 from him, Sarah. Okay. And Greg, you are. I have to find him. Up hmm. oh, 21. 21. So he only made three films, um, and yet he's became a cultural icon. I like her. He symbolized the brooding unrest that simmered inside this generation. <laughs> you could say that for every youthful generation. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure there's been brooding unrest everywhere. George Washington's <laughs> children, they were all brooding, right? At, at one point <laughs> in their lives. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyways, and someone said his good looks didn't, uh, well, it didn't, I'm paraphrasing, his good looks didn't hurt either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but tragically, his life ended when he was driving his Porsche, which he named Little Bastard, which is why that's called, I don't know if I can say that out loud, but it's written there. So I'm just reading the text. It's not I don't right. think that that's, yeah, I think. <laughs> um, he actually has it, had it engraved, uh, put on his, uh, on his Porsche titled that way. Um, but in an accident, someone was making a left-hand turn in front of him and he ran into it at full speed and he died instantly, which is very sad. And the accident occurred just before the release of Rebel Without a Cause. So that just made it even more famous, I'm pretty sure. Um, interestingly enough, the person who did run into him uh, has a profile on WikiTree. He did not go to jail. Um, he was not actually charged at being at fault. There was no official finding of fault. And his family was able to, he only did one interview the day after the crash, and his family saved him basically from all the, um, the spotlight that and all the negative Follow that would have happened because I because I imagine, yeah, it would be hard. That, to, if that had happened this day and time, oh, oh he, there's no way he would yeah. have been toast. But the other interesting thing, um, from the profile, it said that there was a, a curse, a curse on his car. So not only did he die in it, um, of course, um, which you know is work is is bad, but the the curse, the curse came a, a week before he passed away. He met, um, where is it here? Do, 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 do. Um, he met someone, he met Obi-Wan Kenobi um, at a restaurant, uh, Alec Guinness. And outside of the restaurant, he showed him his car. Guinness said that the car had a sinister appearance and said, if you get in that car, you'll be found dead in it by this time next week. <gasps> Seven days later, lo and behold. Oh my gosh, I never heard that story. Wow, there's some major force dark force happening there I, yeah um, we got that oh. <laughs> but not only that oh it goes on so the person who did the detailing on it um uh bought the bought the carcass and it soon it slipped off its trailer and broke a mechanic's leg and then parts of it and it goes on and on and people who have like little pieces of the car bad things were happening to them um it's it's wild so um, I'll get distracted and we'll take up the whole rest of the podcast. But about the curse of the little the curse. So go to the James Dean profile and click on the thing to just to go through all the details of the curse. It's wild. 
<laughs> um, I just want to interject here that Joe Mama's here. I know, I saw. Oh, People were asking about her, and then now hi, she's here. Hi. Hey, Joanna. How are you doing? <laughs> um, okay, the next person who was born on February the 8th is John Ruskin. He was born in the London borough of Camden, Great London, son of James Ruskin and Margaret Cox. Cox. Um, and he died on the 20th of January, 1900, at the age of 80. Um, he was an interesting character. He was a leading, English, he was an art critic of the Victorian era, an art patron, a draftsman, watercolorist, a prominent social thinker and philanthropist. And he wrote books on, on subjects as varied as geology, architecture, myth, ornithology, the study of birds, literature, education, botany, and political economy. So he really, like he covered everything, like the whole spectrum, which is really interesting. Um, he was born, this is where he was born in this uh, complex here. Uh, on the far right would have been the number 54 where he was born. Um, was educated in Oxford. Um, took, a, took three attempts to actually um, uh, convocate um, and then it goes on about his publications. His marriage was not very successful, um, but he did some he did some art critic work. Um, was famous for um, promoting the theory that, uh, which was taken up by the Victorian area, that truth and beauty and religion were all intertwined. And so the 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 fallacy that you know. Someone is someone who's beautiful must be truthful, or all those positive connotations. When it's not always well, I would say that that's not always necessarily. <laughs> they're not always necessarily partnered with each other. But um, very interesting, very well done, um, and very prolific profile, which goes through a lot of the details of his life. So I would highly recommend reading that to find out more. And the last person who's bur who a famous person that they've decided to profile because she was born on February the 8th is Julia Jean Mildred Frances Turner, uh, more commonly known as Lana Turner, born in 1921 in Idaho. Um, and my closest. What's that? She's my closest. She's your closest. Neat. Well, she's my cousin. 21st cousin, six times removed. <laughs> Have to look and see. Um, she is 17 degrees from me, and she is my seventh cousin. Ah, way closer. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Um, and she passed away at the age of 74 in Los Angeles County. But uh, so she was a famous uh, movie star in the in the 40s. Um, Married a lot of people, looks like. She had seven marriages. Seven? Uh, only Woo! four of her husbands are documented here in the or, or have WikiTree profiles. So there are three that we sh that someone should do. Um, just putting it out there, um, and it goes through. But she is um, her marriages were sort of like mayflies. They didn't last very long at all. The first one um, went from February to August of nineteen forty. The second person she married twice because she married and then divorced because he wasn't fully divorced from his first wife. So that had to be annulled. So and then like married an annulment again. more than a divorce. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. Yes. Um, that's right. So it was annulment. It wasn't so, but she did have to marry him twice. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second marriage went from March 43 to August 44. Um, and then the third marriage lasted four years. So she's Ooh. getting, um, and then but none of them lasted really super long, which is very sad. And she died at 74. Um, and I think it was cancer of some sort. Uh, it said down here in her uh, thing. But anyway, she was very famous uh, film actress and the love for that. Um, known as the, was the sweater, um, sweater lady or sweater girl or something like that. The sweater girl, there we go, was one of her nicknames. In a famous pinup. So then, oh, yeah, yeah, and that pinup was in lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of care packages that was sent by the <laughs> and walkers and yes, yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, so the next group are all from One Place Studies, and so this is the the challenge three, uh, though for this from the Society of One Place Studies, they chose there are seven One Place Studies that they were highlighting, and they chose one person from each of those One Place Studies. And I actually have another map here for you. Oh, um, this is the map. 
And all those black dots on that map are places that have one place studies on WikiTree. Wow. That's pretty cool. wild, eh? It looks like almost the full United States film. That's right, yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I zoom in, let's see if this, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Oh, and yeah, it looks like it will. Okay, that's good. Or, oh, it's taken its time to redraw. There we go. So there's still a few places. There's a few places here that don't have one place studies. So well, if you haven't place, got one, those one place, places may not have places either. <laughs> Some of those places may not be places. <laughs> populated areas. Yeah, but look at yeah. So yeah, it looks like a good chunk of the U.S. And this is Southern Ontario right here, where my cursor is flying. I don't know if you can see that. Um, can pretty you see? heavily covered. Yeah, so even Southern Ontario is pretty heavily place covered. Study too. Yeah, um, and then we go across the. Let's look at Newfoundland. Has a has a bunch there, so that's pretty cool. Except I saw some was up in Iceland. Iceland, I think. The Azores have um, the Azores have one, yeah. Look at Iceland has at least six that I can tell. Um, where's the Azores? There, the island. No, oh, there is that the Azores there. Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, cool. Anyways, oh, so, we got to get some one place studies. Oh, there we go. There, there I was like, England doesn't have anyone. No, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. England. And look at this, the the, the coast. Oh, that's, is that Amsterdam? Belgium so this and... is Netherlands, right? Oh, as, you're, as you're saying, those aren't the studies. Those aren't studies? The, she said, those well, are did... the map. It's not the map of the place studies. Those must be the profiles of people in place studies. Uh, I went, well, let's see. I went to... I'll show you how I got there. Um, I went to the, the help page for Wikitree Plus for the text search, because that's I wanted to see if there was a way I could I could search for one place studies. She's giving you the one place study. Uh, there you go. Grab that. Got it? Uh, Grab it from the chat. OK. Oh, I have to move my cursor over to the right screen. Oh, no, I don't want to hide it. I just want to grab it. Ah. You might need to just type it in. I, I might just have to type it in. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, now I've lost. That's pretty funny. What's that? That that um, people are never afraid of correcting us. That is good. But I <laughs> I, I followed a link from the WikiTree Plus, so that's. Apps. It says you have to add calm and then another back. Um, back. Oh, I see. Paris five four three nine slash ops map forward slash com forward slash yeah I've got it here look at that well I I was following the link that that Alesh had put in the help so oh. it could still be the same one there could have been ninety five dots there and one hundred and fifty dots in that section. Let's let's compare. That is a prettier map. Azure, oh, it's a I much agree. prettier map. It is pretty. So you can that, find it if you go to the project page. You can find this map. Right. Is oh, there one it? for Island McGee? Ireland? Just just blow up Ireland, and I can tell you. Is no. It up here? Nope. Yeah, I don't see one. I'm gonna right. have to do one for Island McGee. You're gonna have to do one. I am. You are. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I should be living in Island McGee right now. Right. Okay. Well, um, here we you are. Learn something new on WikiTree every Saturday morning. Okay, yes. So I would suggest. I would say Azure's right, but I'm right too, in that this is still a map of the One Place Studies, but it's just not. It's the one that WikiTree gives us, which is not as pretty as the one that Azure's. So Azure's more right. But I'm still More right. <laughs> we have the. I was following the. Right. I was following the link that Alice had, you know, posted. So, anyways, we will move. We'll move on. So Charles Bullock, he's one of the one place studies, and he his one place study was from Bletchingdon, Oxfordshire, England, part of the Bletchingdon. And so, if you open up that page for Bletchingdon, Oxfordshire one place study, 
um, you'll get information about. So first of all, they need a study coordinator. Um, so if you're around that area and like to help out with that, uh, I'm sure that people people would like to do that. Nice little picture uh, here. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> History of the place. And uh, then there's some some other places where you can fill out more about that. And if you go to the category for uh, Blutchigen, you can see the list of all the profiles that are attached to that place. Um, and back here, what I like about the, the stickers that they put on them is that you can actually, that photo that's on, in, on the One Place Study page becomes part of the sticker. How cool is that? That is really cool. Isn't that cool? That is really cool. I, I, I thought I thought that that really appealed to me. Um, anyways, uh, way to go, Hillary. Good stuff. Um, so Charles, uh, born November 1822. Um, he died. He, he was born. He died and was born. He bo was born first, then he died. But oh. they both happened in Lexington. <laughs> Sorry, man. You almost made me spit take. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, born before the 3rd of November, because that's when he was christened. So this is a case of where you have the baptismal record, but you don't have the official birth record because they prob uh, there probably wasn't an official birth record or they're just hard to find. Um, uh, and uh, so, and then he, there's obviously some census records there, lists children and whatnot. And then all the, all the sources, lots of sources. Look at that. Um, which is very cool. Um, then moving on from Charles and Lechington, uh, we move to Roseanne Holton uh, from Quebec. Uh, she was born in 1865, before Canada became uh, Canada in 1867, so just before. Um, so she was born in saint gabriel de -Val cartier in Canada East, or Bas-Canada, Lower Canada, um, as it would have been known if you were a French speaker. Though, looking at her parents' names, John Holton and Catherine Sweeney were her parents. So she made, um, it doesn't say here whether she grew up being an English speaker or a French speaker. Um, but my guess is looking at her ancestors, Holton and Sweeney um, O'Reilly, is that she would be uh, an English speaker in Quebec. Um, but probably she was bilingual. Most people, uh, many people were um, to survive because because of the combination. But um, and there's the person who designed this wrote, um, created her own website for um, Valcartier genealogy. Um, You're pretty close to her too, Greg. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised because um, I'm related to many people from Quebec. Uh, if they have Quebecois lines, French Canadian lines. Twenty three degrees. Okay. Uh, not official cousins, though. It doesn't look. No. Right. No. She was born and born on the fourteenth and baptized on the twenty first of July in the Saint Gabriel de la Cartier Catholic Church. Um, and she, she was the um, she married Patrick Cassin later, and then it has uh, some a census record as well, and again lots of records here so nicely done and so that profile is is part of the Valcartier Saint Gabriel de Valcartier uh, one place study we're so glad we have you here to pronounce all that stuff <laughs> well it's fun <laughs> I, I would be butchering everything <laughs> yeah. well I might be too but I'm just doing it with panache and so. you're doing it with confidence <laughs> exactly <laughs> Um, William Edward Manley is the next profile, and he is from the Port of Hull Society Sailors Orphan Home, One Place Study. So this is interesting. This is one that's not based on a, a, a city or a, a town, but actually of a, an like an actual home, like just one building, basically, or, or organization that took in orphans. Um, and his story is rather sad. He was the son of a fisherman, uh, John Manley, uh, and his mother was Marianne Gregory. Um, born, um, born 1867 on the 10th of August, um, and baptized 13th of November, 1867. Um, his family left Essex when he was young, uh, moved to Hull, Yorkshire. Um, his father was still a fisherman on the vessel Vary. His father died, uh, actually drowned in 1875. And he, uh, the mother seemed unable to cope because they had a big family. Um, and so he and his younger brother 
were sent to live in the, the Port of Hull Society Sailors Orphan Home, um, which is very, you know, so that's where he, he basically grew up there. Um, and he did become a, fi a fisherman himself. Um, and he was, when he was married, uh, when he was married, or the census right before he was married, because he was married in 91 and the, the census was just before then, uh, he was living with his sister, Louisa, in her house in Hull. Um, so, so this uh, one place study would be all about people who lived or, or grew up in that orphan's home. And um, as, so I, I just posted that, as is saying that, or Azure, sorry, Azure is saying that she's going to be featuring this on the one place study Wednesday. This study, this one right here? That's uh, apparently. This, very cool. Nice. Okay. Well, I won't go into any more details. You have to tune into Azure for that. <laughs> Good. Um, but I thought that was interesting, you know, that you, a one place study doesn't have to be just you right. know, a, a town, you know, which is what, what you think of, or at least it I could usually, be a house. Well, it could be a house, house study, but it could be a one place study for the house. Yes. Well, wasn't Betsy saying that she was doing a one place study for a, a specific her grandfather's building? house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard some people do like street studies mm -hmm. oh yeah our neighborhood store study neat mm -hmm. neat uh sarah monksfield uh born in the 3rd of january 1820 in st leonard's shoreditch in middlesex england um and that is the only uh official record they have is is the baptism is the born hmm. the birth and baptismal record of her um but this one has a lot has has some research notes things that they found um and and so there's there's details there, but they just haven't the records just don't exist, or they don't we're not sure what, where they where they go from here. And that's part of the Shoreditch Middlesex um, one place study. And that is a so it is a, it's a it's a district in the east end of London. So again, not a full city, just a district, a part but of it. It should have lots of people in it because that's a uh, I would think it would. Um, I'd have to go somewhere else to find the the, the list of all those that are connected, though. Um, then we have Elspeth uh, Dun uh, Duncan or Elspeth Smith, born daughter of Alexander Smith and Anne Ross, born in 1837 in Aber Aberdeenshire, Tar Tarvis, Aberdeenshire, Scotland. Um, married twice and passed away at the age of 71 in 1908, and she's part of the. Tarvis Aberdeenshire one place study. Um, she had a son with George Melvin uh, before she was married, and then she did get, uh, get married um, and had four children subsequently from there. And again, lots, of, lots of source. The people who do this, you know, they lots of good sources. So I love when the, you you see the actual records with the mm -hmm. actual handwriting on them. That's yeah, that's very cool. Uh, Samuel Heinz Vick is part of the Wilson, North Carolina one place study. Um, he was born in 60, 19, 1863 on April 1st. I was going to say April Fool's Day, but it probably wasn't called April Fool's Day back then. I now I have to look up when April Fool's Day. Yeah, I got to do it, Sarah. <laughs> when did that become a thing? It was a thing ever since. I was, in high, I was in elementary school, but I don't know <laughs> when it started. Uh, Nash County, North Carolina, um, and passed away in Wilson, Wilson, North Carolina. So that is the town of Wilson in the county of Wilson, in Wilson yes. County? Yes. Okay. Um, on the 8th of July, 1946. Uh, he's also part of the Black Heritage Pro uh, Project. He was an educator, a politician, a businessman, a real estate developer, and a church leader. Um, he was born likely enslaved in Nash County, North Carolina, and then his, his parents were Daniel Vick and Fanny Blount, um, uh, and that was on a census in 1880, so that would have been after they were freed, right? Um, and he graduated from Lincoln University, um, and, uh, and then he got married. Um, became a school board member of the school board. He became the postmaster for Wilson. Um, so very cool. He had a big, even went into real estate. Really neat. I love how they find all these little details, snippets of his life. You know, he sold his quarter lot for $150. You know, like 
that's kind of neat. That little piece of, you know. Yeah, but was it his lot or was it part of his real estate venture? Mm, yeah. So, you Which know. Which also is pretty impressive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very cool. Okay. I yeah. have some history about April Fool's Day. Okay, and, then. <laughs> and it, and it's, been, it's been around for a long time. Oh. So, there's no... Like it's unknown the origin of April Fools, but there are theories around it. <clears throat> so there's so I'm gonna name a couple of them. So there's this disputed association between April Fool, April Fools, and the foolishness in the Canterbury Tales, which came out in 1392. Oh my! Uh, and then a, in 1508, a French poet kind of mentioned it. Um, and then there's actually in uh, 1686 there was a ticket to the washing of lions and tower of london that they put in a i think in an ad so a whole bunch of people went and they were tricked into going <laughs> to see the lions washed at the tower of london so or they, they call it the fool's holy day um wow. april's fish uh or and then the french they call it potion de avril oh and, that was a good one there very good uh, yeah. And I'm sure you've seen the, I always think about the one where they posted a thing of how spaghetti grows on trees. I don't know if you've ever seen that <laughs> thing. Oh, yeah. Where they have the video, BBC posted the video of how the spaghetti grew on trees for people, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so he probably, it was, it probably did exist when he was born. So. Wow. Well, I take it back. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Wow, there we go. So the last thing I was, again, lots of really good research notes added, um, which is really cool. And Kathy Neva, I noticed in the chat, was talking about how many profiles were added. Um, and all all seven of these people had many profiles. I think the, the lowest was like 560 some profiles. And some of them were, were way more, like this was 965. There was a couple that were in the thousand you know, over a thousand profiles added to lines. So that was very good. This is the last one. Uh, the one I'm closest uh, linked to, 17 degrees. George Wallace, born in Aberdeenshire and moved to um, moved to uh, Ontario. So he's part of two, talk, see, two um, one place studies. So Peterhead, Aberdeenshire, where he was born um, and also the Reach County, Reach County, Ontario, one place study. Where he moved to um or did he move or did the county line move did the county line no i don't think scotland and ontario are i don't think any boundary could confuse those two <laughs> well i thought you said reach on township and well it is reach it's reach it's county, reach ontario. but yeah um so anyways there's, there's some really good uh detective work done here in creating so he was a farm laborer um he was working on a farm and uh his future wife happened to be working at the same location and then lo and behold they got married what a shocker um you know how they got how they met um and then they moved okay so he arrived in canada in 1852 first baby was born 1853 uh and then uh, followed by 12 others so 13 kids wow um but what's really neat is um they actually included links to maps, which um, Ontario uh, has this really neat, uh, well, there's, Canada actually has this project where it has maps of many of the counties. And so I think this one's 1870 or 1880. It's around that time. It'll probably say it if I- It shows the property owners. It shows the property owners. So this is this is the county. Yeah. And if you, the, that little wee chicken scratch you see, if you zoom in, you actually can see there's the property. There's a little creek that runs through it. There's the railway line. And George Wallace is, uh, I had it open here. Uh, let's see. I have to turn my head sideways. Oh, now I've lost where I am now. Okay. He was oh, concession 13. Concession 13, number eight and nine. So it was way over here somewhere. There it is. G. Wallace. G. Wallace. There you go. That's the actual property where he, where his family, and I've got, I've got maps like this where the, where the original Clarks had settled in my area here. So it's a very cool resource that we have available, which is neat. And that's it. Over to you. 
<laughs> Over to you, Sarah. So, okay. I just wanted to say that, yes. you know, I was still looking at this Wikipedia article for April Fool's Day. Oh. Apparently there's a, a list of genuine news that happened on April 1st where people were mistaking it as a hoax on April. So it was like pe things that people thought were April Fool's hoaxes that were actual news. And there's like we're a real list things, of them that, ha that happened. So I just wanted to add that on. But two photos. Okay. Two photos. No. What? To the photos. To the photo. Two photos. Two to the photos. Two photos. Two, 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 two photos. <laughs> okay, I'll share my screen. While she's getting her stuff up, I have to say that I joined the Appalachia Project Discord channel and it has been so much fun. Yeah. Biscuits. Okay. Biscuits. I've done everything I was supposed to do. Biscuits and the channel. Biscuits. <laughs> okay. So, so this theme, so if you guys didn't know, this year, instead of doing a theme every week, we're doing a theme every month. So this month, for the month of February, it's the theme is homes. So um, we looked at a couple of them that had been posted last week. So we'll look at, I'll scroll through all of them, but... Uh, we'll focus on the ones we didn't see last week. We saw that one last week. Let's see if we see any animals either. Let's see if we see any. Then we just had the three, I think. Oh, and no. then now we've got Sarah's. No. Or not, Betsy's. Betsy's. There's Betsy's. Yeah. The one that she just posted about. Right. Um, I like the little, the, little, oh, the little flags. Pennants or whatever. Yeah. The GGG post, I think she wrote details about it right mm. oh cool that looks like a southern house yeah looks yep. like well, a... that was probably one of my cousins in quebec white county tennessee janine Je yes janine <laughs> yes. Yes. yes this is her great grandparents house also sadly the house was burnt down several years ago Aww. at least they have the photo Look, there's a cartoon dog, but a dog nonetheless. Wait, there's a cartoon dog? Cartoon. What, what do you mean? It's a real dog. That's well, not a real dog? Isn't that a, is that a picture or is that a, a That's drawing? A picture. It looks like a drawing to me. Huh. Uh, I think that's a real picture. I think, I, I see what you're saying. Blow it up more, lady. Or I think maybe the resolution was so poor that it looks like a picture. Or looks because, like a cartoon. Yeah. It looks like a cartoon to me. Huh. Now to me it does. Get the get the opinion of the, the crowd. Yes. <clears throat> what do the viewers think? What do the viewers think? Mm -hmm. So there's a girl in her oh, that's a small picture. A girl in her pink sweater almost it looks like. Oh look at that. Well you could zoom in on that one. I'm trying. That's as far you as it goes. Zoom in on the other one. <laughs> I could have zoomed in on the other one. Here, let's go back. Yeah, go back. There we go. Yeah, that's a picture. Huh, look like a cartoon. I guess just the pixelation. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a dog. The important yeah, see, part dog, of the yeah. picture she's already pointed out is that there's a dog in the picture. Yeah, yeah. It looks like that's he's holding a shot. Part. He looks like almost he's holding some kind of tool yep. there. And then there's a child. Yeah. But the dog is the important part. Of the yes, picture that's of the right. Child. It is the important part of the picture. <laughs> uh, and that's it. Let's see if there were any, since we just talked about the G2G, let's go look there real quick to see if there's any other pictures or there's some cool stories. Like this one's not on. Oh, yeah. I guess we saw that house. From Alexis um, Nelson. But Alexis, yeah. That was Okay, I'm looking for. Oh, we didn't see this one. No, we so, this is a photo of a reunion of Michael and Elizabeth nice. Seifert family. Sure, yeah. Taking in the early 1890s. Um, the house was called Seifert Row. And it was in. It doesn't say where the house was, but it says California. the families oh. who moved to. I think this one's in Illinois, but mm. they, they took it before they moved to California, I believe. Maybe. But that's one we John didn't see. Vasky, right? That's one of his favorites. Are there any animals in that one? 
Sarah? Uh, I don't see any. Nope. What there might be a bird in the tree. What is doing in the front? Is she petting oh. a duck? Oh. What is that? What is that? Hold on. Let's we'll zoom Come on. in. We gotta see the aminals. Aminals. <laughs> I can't tell. Maybe she was looking at the ground. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. I think it's a duck. <clears throat> I'm gonna. So we I'm saw gonna this one. On it was burned down several years ago. So. Mm -hmm. There's the dog picture. The dog picture. So. Okay. It was this oh, Northern Ontario. Was published in the Church Journal. You know that is called a one and a half story uh, log house, and those are very important structures in Canada, and all of the loyalist homes were constructed that way and if you drive through parts of ontario you can identify the routes that the loyalists took because these crazy cool log houses that you can't tell are log houses anymore but you can tell that they were the one and a half story houses all the way through mm -hmm. horsey bunnies i saw you get excited yeah look there's lots of animals in this one there's some horses oh, wow. a puppy and a puppy Wow, this is a cool. I like this photo. Yeah, Oops, that was a. That's a big house. Yeah, yeah it is. This this person just resting over here. Is that Mama? She couldn't walk all the way out. Such a big picture. She looks yeah. older, elder, elderly, doesn't she? Yeah. Look at the vines on the porch. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a cool photo. This now a photo farm is in Leominster, New would... Hampshire. Yeah. And if, if you use a photo retouching on that, it, that would really pop, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody do that. Somebody grab that picture and do a photo retouching and, and repost it. Okay. Oh, Ooh. this is that one. So, old barn at my parents' farm oh. collapsed in the wee hours of the night in May 1965. Oh. I hope there weren't any pets in there. I was going to say, it looks like from the Barn Builders show. Mm -hmm. Barn Builders. Oh, look. I guess they built that on top of it. Oh, nice. Maybe. Neat. Oh, and a pool. So Love now it's this. a pool house. A mm -hmm. cement pond. A cement pond. <laughs> <laughs> this was probably from Google Earth or Zillow, Chris. Maybe. Oh. This Before is a drones Betsy's, were a thing, right? yes. Betsy's post. Um, a little girl in the pink dress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is a really cool. Franklin picture. County, Virginia. And that's all the photos, my friends. We saw some animals this time. We did. Yeah. After which, and we got to see Kiki wrapped around your, your neck. That's I right. Know. She's on my lap right now. She's back. Okay. On. John Tyner says that he spotted a buzzard on a tree outside his window. So he oh had nature time today, too. We can look at some of the stuff coming up in the next little bit. We'll try and do that. So let me get my screen share up. Uh, we'll start off with the WikiTree G to G, <clears throat> which shows us that uh, we've got some interesting stuff that uh, policy stuff that Chris has mm -hmm. up. Uh, uh, creating profiles for the new system. Have you seen the changes to the family tree profiles? Uh, Wiki Three Challenge Number Four is the Freedman Bureau mm -hmm. Friday. Descendants of enslaved communities, fun, uh, and then well, yeah, it's a, it's a great project because mm -hmm. getting the the more people we identify and we recognize on Wiki Tree that we're enslaved, the more people are going to find their families because mm -hmm. Wiki Tree is so good about that. Uh, and then the highlights for the Wikipedia Tree oh. Challenge for the Society of One Place Studies, which we have covered, I think, quite well <laughs> this week. Um, so have you seen what's happening around Wikitree? I love Eowyn's gotten this up for yes, us. Yes, so, that's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Today is the 11th. So mm -hmm. coming up, uh, the sa Saturday Sourcing Sprint is going on mm. now. Mm. Uh, our, we're, we're going on right now, the, the <laughs> live nice. roundup. The Nations Global Tour Argentina wrap ups coming up on the 13th. Uh, the Freedman's Bureau Friday, uh, it's February 16th to the 23rd. The 17th is bingo night. The 17th is Friday is bingo night. Puerto Rico and first responders projects. And then the oh. week of roundup next week. I will not be here physically in my, my place, mm. my home. I will be in Yarker 
Ontario, mm -hmm. if anybody knows where that is. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's in the woods. It's in the woods. Yeah, I've yeah. done some wiki tree live casts from there before, so hopefully that'll be okay. Uh, I've got all sorts of stuff to do. I am puppy sitting for Aww. my pup, for my pup niece while my mm -hmm. sister in law goes to Mexico with her husband. How fun is that? Nice. So don't break into her house while she's gone, or you'll find <laughs> me and a beautiful German Shepherd. She's not much of a puppy anymore, but I guarantee you, yeah. So all right. Um, let's see. And social media, as yours, always got a good list up. So if you want to share some of the stuff that we've got going on on WikiTree, you can run over and grab the links for Facebook, Twitter. What is the Mastodon? There you go. Mastodon. Woo. And, uh, uh, Insta? Instagram. There you go. And YouTube. So you can grab all that information. They've got the profile images up for you. So question of the week, uh, 15 nations. Um, and if you, if you have the extension and you, you hover over something, it'll tell you all about it. One name study Tuesday, uh, one it, and one name study Tuesday. Does that have any, are you going to connect that with Valentine's day? Ooh. That is the 14th. That's my grandfather's birthday. My parents anniversary. Wow. Um, look one place Wednesday, Bally Carey. That's from the, not the Northern Ireland family history Society's projects and they are doing an incredible job they're the ones who really have helped identify my island mcgee connections i'm excited mm. for that one place study uh project showcase uh on thursday and what is wiki tree on friday and the connection fighter friday and friday night bingo is happening on friday so no date night this week and then saturday there's going to be a new meet the members and of course us so you'll get to see us next week as well um is that it? Did I just mm -hmm. did I just run through everything? I think you did. So we enjoy seeing you people here, and we'll see you here next week. See you next week. We promise. We'll see yeah. you next week. <laughs> see ya.